Let's explore our page setup options for documents where a story continues on multiple pages, like a book or technical manual. I've got my new document dialog open. Facing pages is clicked on. Let's make it a two column document. Just accept the defaults for everything else. There's my one page. I'm going to double click the default layer and change it to something a little bit darker so it'll stand out on the page while we're working. Let's go to the Pages panel and now we're going to place some text in this document. Command or Control D is going to take us to the Place dialog. We're going to select a document. Here I'm going to leave on Show Import Options and Replace Selected Item. When I click OK, you can see that our character set and platform are available to change. We can even set the dictionary to the language that we want. Take a look at some of our other options. Replace three or more spaces with a tab. Here we can remove extra carriage returns between paragraphs if we wanted to. I'm just going to click OK and you can see my cursor turns into that loaded text cursor. From here I can just draw a frame that will accommodate some of the text, but you can see that there's an overset indicator in the lower right hand side telling me there's more text to this story than will fit in the frame that I've created. If I click inside that frame again, I can draw another frame that contains more of that text, but you can see that there's still oversets. I'm going to undo till my cursor is loaded up again and explore another option. Here I'll draw that text draw that text box I should say. There's the overset we expect. I'm going to load up my cursor again, but take a look what happens when I hold down the Option or Alt key. We get a semi-automatic page flow indicator. I'm going to keep that Option Alt held down and I can draw another frame, but notice that my cursor also stays loaded up. And If I click just once it'll draw a frame inside the margins. Let's back out and do it again. Watch how my cursor changes now when I go to the shift key. That squiggle indicates that it's going to follow the specifications of our document and create as many pages as are necessary to exhaust all of the text. So remember we created a two column document. It's following the margins and it's following our column parameters and it's displaying all the text that's in that file and creating extra pages. Let's just reduce the size of our document. Use the selection tool, click on any one of those frames, go to the view menu and show text threads and you can see that each page contains two separate frames linked together and the last frame on one page is linked to the first frame on the next. The process is called text threading. That's what Adobe InDesign calls it. What would happen though if we changed our mind and we wanted our margins to be different. On our master page I'm adjusting the size of the margins and I'm actually adjusting the size of the gutter, the space between the two columns on the page. And now I'm going to click OK. If I go to page 1 and zoom in again, you can see that the frames that we already placed didn't move. So we could be stuck adjusting each one of those frames to fit the new parameters of our pages. Let's do something else. Let's just delete everything but page one. We're going to get a warning that says that there's objects on those pages, but that's okay. Notice that we've got that overset box. It's only the containers on those pages that have been deleted, not the text itself. 
InDesign maintains the entire integrity of the input. Now I'm going to click on that overset box, shift click, reconstruct the document, and notice now that it's followed the new margin parameters and the new gutter parameter. This is an easy way to change our mind, do something different, or change our layout without having to do a lot of manual labor. The functionality is the same here for both CS3 and CS4.